Uh, all right, so last time we were talking about the Gaussian mixture models in the EM algorithm, and we ran through um, an example in 1D, and the basic idea there is you've got a bunch of points uh, you want to fit two Gaussians to these points. You don't know which point came from which Gaussian. So what you do is you place the Gaussians randomly somewhere in the space, use these positions to figure out which point looks like which Gaussian, and then use those assignments to re-estimate the positions of the Gaussian, and just repeat that uh, until convergence. So uh, that's the 1D example, and we left off uh, on, the, on the multiple dimensions. And in, um, in K dimensions, or in D dimensions, uh, you basically do the same thing, only equations become a tiny bit more complicated. Now, instead of a single number, uh, you have vectors, and you're doing everything over vectors, right? So uh, each source is still a Gaussian, and what you're doing is uh, to do the mean, so the mean vector is going to be the average of all the instance vectors weighted by the probability that that instance came from Gaussian uh, C, from the source C, right? And you do it for each attribute J uh, in uh, in your set of uh, <clears throat> in your set of attributes, so that's what you do for the mean. Uh, you can also estimate variances, but uh, if your dimensionality is not too huge, you can also estimate covariances. And covariances allow you to have Gaussians that are not aligned to the axes. They allow you to estimate Gaussians that are oblique. So, for example, this red Gaussian, you see how it's not sort of flat, it's tilted, and the blue one is tilted uh, as well. Uh, to have a Gaussian that looks like that, you need a covariance matrix. So you need to encode how each attribute, uh, how the attributes influence each other, right? How they correlate. And, and that's encoded by the covariance matrix. And the way you compute the covariance matrix is for a pair of attributes J and K, you look at uh, you look at each instance i, xi, and you see how far was the jth attribute away from the mean, how, how, how far was the kth attribute away from the mean, multiply them together, uh, and add it up over all data points weighted by the probability that that data point came from the seeth Gaussian, right? Uh, because you're updating the seeth uh, covariance matrix. So that basically tells you are the attributes positively correlated or negatively correlated. So as one increases, does the other decrease or um, increase? <clears throat> and for all of those, uh, you need the weight. And the weight is just the probability that the ith data point came from the seeth Gaussian uh, in the mixture, and you get that with a Bayes rule, and uh, and it's based on the on the normal distribution, right? So. Um, and, uh, and 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 that's what the inverse, the, that's what the Gaussian looks like for multiple dimensions, right? Rather than uh, rather than single attributes, you now have vectors. So you have a vector difference between the ith instance and the mean for the seeth Gaussian. Uh, again, the same vector, and you multiply them together, but you insert the inverse of the covariance matrix in the middle. So that's what it looks like. <clears throat> okay. 